Hey gamers, welcome back to Creative Gamers. Today we're diving into something that's been creating quite a buzz, the new Game Hub Emulator Lite. This isn't just a simple update or minor tweak, it's a complete rebuild of the original Game Hub Emulator, redesigned to be lighter, faster, and fully offline. If you're tired of login screens, unnecessary permissions, and all that background tracking you never asked for, then this version is definitely for you. So go ahead, hit that like button, and let's dive in as I show you everything step by step. So first things first, what exactly is Game Hub Lite? It's an open source, privacy respecting emulator that's been rebuilt by an independent developer, not the official Game Hub team. The main goal here is to remove all the tracking, telemetry, and login requirements and make the emulator run fully offline. The app size has also been drastically optimized, reduced by around 59%, making it faster, smoother, and more efficient. Everything about this project is open source and transparent, which means you can actually check the code yourself and confirm that it doesn't collect or send any of your personal data anywhere. Now let's go through the setup. When you open the emulator for the first time, you'll see the user agreement and privacy policy. Just accept it and you'll land directly on the main dashboard. There's no login, no unnecessary permissions, nothing else standing in your way. On the dashboard, you'll see two main options, one for PC emulation and another for Steam PC emulation. For this example, we'll choose the PC emulation option. Tap on Import PC Games, locate your game folder, and select your games.exe file. For example, GTA 5. After that, the emulator will automatically start installing all the required firmware and components in the background. Once that's done, head back to the main screen, and your game will now appear right there ready to launch. Everything looks and feels just like the original Game Hub, but this version is noticeably lighter and faster. Tap on the three dots next to your game, and open Game Settings. In the General Settings section, there's nothing you need to change. Keep it as it is. Now, move to the Compatibility Settings. Here, set the Compatibility Layer to Proton 10 ARM 64X2, and under Translation Params, choose Extreme preset. In the GPU driver section, Snapdragon users should select the latest turnip driver, while Snapdragon 8 Elite users can go for the 8E Gen 5 driver. If you're on a MediaTek or Mali chipset, simply select the system driver. Next, in the DXVK version section, Snapdragon users can leave it on default, and MediaTek or Helio users should pick DXVK V1.11.1 Mali fix. For the VKD3D version, choose the latest Proton 2.14.1, and finally, for the CPU translator, set it to the latest FEX version. Once that's done, open the touch control settings and enable input mapping. That's all you need to configure. Now go back and let's start the game. When you launch your game, it'll initially open in a smaller window. Unlike the official Game Hub, which starts in full screen, Game Hub Lite needs a quick manual adjustment. Wait a few minutes for the game to fully load, then open the in-game settings, graphics menu, and change your resolution to 1280x720. After saving, the game might crash once. That's normal, and it happens occasionally. I've also added a GTA 5 save file to skip directly into gameplay, just like we did with the official Game Hub emulator. This time, the game opens in full screen, and after waiting a few moments for it to load completely, I'm now inside Michael's home. Performance-wise, I'm getting around 40 to 45 FPS indoors, which is quite stable. When stepping outside or driving through the city, the FPS dips to around 20 to 25, with some occasional fluctuations. This kind of performance depends heavily on your device. If you see someone on YouTube running GTA 5 at 60 FPS, they're probably using a Snapdragon 8 Elite or something even more powerful. I'm currently using a Snapdragon 8 Gen 2, which is still great for emulation, but these frame dips are pretty normal for complex PC titles. While driving, you might notice slight frame stutters or performance drops at higher speeds, but nothing major. It's actually very close to how the official Game Hub performs. Overall, I'd say Game Hub Lite performs almost identically to the official Game Hub version. The difference is that this version is lighter, cleaner, and doesn't ask for unnecessary permissions or logins. Plus, it's completely open source and transparent, which gives you full control over your privacy. If you care about keeping your gameplay experience private while still enjoying smooth performance, Game Hub Lite is definitely worth trying out. And that's it for today's video. If you want me to do a full Game Hub versus Game Hub Lite comparison, let's hit 200 likes on this video and drop a comment down below letting me know what game you want me to test next. Thanks for watching, and as always, stay creative, gamers.